Okay. So let us continue the problems. So last class we have completed these two problems. I think sine omega t into u of t. What is its corresponding Laplace transform? Omega by s square plus omega square, and also cos omega t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? S by s square plus omega square. This will be completed in last lecture. So now next problem find find Laplace transform for for the function x of t equal to e power minus a t into sine omega t into u of t e power minus a t into sine omega t into u of t. So see here this is x of t. Sin omega t into u of t already we have completed, right? Sin omega t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? Here, what is ROC for these two sine functions, sine and cos? Real part of is greater than zero. Real part of is greater than zero. Here also for both sine and cos. What is its Laplace transform? Omega by s square plus omega square. Now let us take this as x of t function. And what is this x of s? Which property I have to use here? Signal, whatever desired signal, required signal is there. That is e power minus a t form is there. So we have the shifting property e power minus a t into x of t. What is its Laplace transform? We have x of s plus a. If x of t Laplace transform is x of s, then from the time s domain shifting property states that e power minus a t into x of t Laplace transform is x of s plus a. So using this, using this property, e power minus a t into sine omega t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? This is our x of s. Here, e power minus a t, I have multiplied for this x of t. Then what is the change I have to do this side? S has to be replaced with s plus a. That is the only change, right? So omega by s plus a whole square plus omega square. This is a corresponding Laplace transform for this function. Now the thing is to find the ROC. Here what is ROC? Real part of s is greater than 0. But in place of s, what we have here? s plus a is there. Now s is replaced with s plus a. So here real part of s, you will get it as greater than minus a. Why? Because s plus a must be greater than 0. Means s is greater than minus a. Real part of s. Here no imaginary part is there. ROC means real part of s greater than minus a. So this is our ROC for this problem. In the same manner, we can find Laplace transform for e power minus a t into cos omega t into u of t also. Okay. Hope you have covered this. I am erasing the content. So these two functions are known as, I mean, this e power minus a t into sine omega t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? Just now we completed omega by s plus a. Omega square is there or simply omega? Is omega only, right? Omega by s plus a whole square plus omega square. And what is ROC? Real part of S greater than minus A. Next function, next, next problem, find the Laplace transform for e power minus A t into cos omega t u of t. Find Laplace transform for this function. How to find? Again, same property we have to use. We know that cos omega t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? We have S by S square plus omega square real part of s is greater than 0. Now e power minus a t into x of t. So let us take this as x of t. Then what about this? This is x of s. Now e power minus a t into x of t. What is its Laplace transform? x of s plus a. So by applying this property, e power minus a t into x of t means e power minus a t into x of t into, sorry, 
in place of x of t what i have to write e power, power. E power minus 18 into this function cos omega t into u of t what is its laplace transform x of s plus a wherever s is there i have to replace it with s plus a whole square plus omega square same roc real part of s greater than minus yes. because s is replaced with s plus a s may s value will be greater than minus a you will get real part of s okay so these two are the pairs so here you can write that one also note these two functions are known as damped sine and cosine functions okay the name for these two functions in control system you will have uh, these sort of input signals e power minus 80 into cos omega t into u of t what is its laplace transform s plus a by s plus a whole square plus omega square whole divided by and what about real part of s greater than minus a okay these two functions what is the name given to these two functions e power minus 80 cos omega t these two are known as damped sine and cosine functions damped sine and cosine functions e power minus 80 into sine omega t into u of t e power minus 80 into cos omega t into u of t and their corresponding laplace transforms are these okay if you have any doubt you can ask okay <clears throat> let us go for next problem next a few more problems application of property here also again we are seeing how to use this properties in clearing content next problem find laplace transform for x of t equal to e power minus 5t into try to solve this e power minus 5t into u of t minus 1 e power minus 5t into u of t minus 1 see here we can solve this problem using standard definition as well as using properties also suppose if you go for standard definition what we have x of s equal to laplace transform of any signal e signal multiplied with kernel e power minus st and what i have to write here in place of x of t the given signal e power minus 5t into u of t minus 1 into e power minus st dt u of t minus 1 u of t minus 1 means what type of signal this is right shifted u of t is right shifted by one time means signal will start from t equal to 1 onwards till infinity and what is its amplitude 1 so what are the limits that i have to write now only 1 to infinity because beyond 1 there is no signal there is no amplitude it is 0 0 u of t minus 1 is 0 from minus infinity to 1 so limits i have to take only from 1 to infinity so from 1 to infinity this is e power minus 5t u of t minus 1 is 1 e power minus st dt now try to solve this integration e power minus of s plus pi t dt what about its integration minus 1 by s plus pi integration 1 to infinity exponential integration is again exponential function t substitute upper limit minus lower limit minus 1 by s plus pi e power minus infinity minus e power minus of s plus pi isn't it upper limit what about e power minus infinity value zero e power minus infinity value is zero so let us continue it from here onwards minus 1 by s plus pi zero minus of s plus 
pi, isn't it? So then, what is the Laplace transform for the given signal e power s plus pi by s plus pi? And this is a causal signal. U of t minus one is existing only in the first quadrant. This is a quad uh, causal signal. Hence, what is R O C? Real part of S is greater than its pole for any causal. What is the pole value here? Minus pi. S equal to minus pi. Minus pi. Real part of S is greater than minus pi. So maximum. Suppose catch the R O C. If it is mentioned in the problem, means definitely we have to go for S plane minus pi. Draw a line. Like this, R O C also you have to sketch if it is mentioned in the question means. Okay, real part of S is on X axis and imaginary part of an S and Y axis. Similarly, if any poles you have to plot it in S plane. Here this natural logarithm you have to use to find the poles and all. Okay, so here like that you have to represent R O C also. Main R O C means it is related to this condition. That's it. Okay. So now let us see same solution using properties because exactly we cannot restrict our problem to a few problems. I mean we cannot restrict the solutions because properties we can use in solving the problems or standard definitions, isn't it? Two methods are there as well as here instead of minus pi t whatever may be the constant and here instead of u of t minus one it can be u of t minus ten may be there instead of u r may be there delta may be there, isn't it? So the procedure is important. Uh, how to use the properties and solving the integration that is important here. So let us see how to solve this using properties. Same problem. Next to some more other some other procedure. What we have to find? We have to find Laplace transform of the signal e power minus pi t into u of t minus one. This we have to find. So here, what is the reference pair? I have to take exponential signal. Unit step is there. So first, I am taking known Laplace transform pair e power minus e t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? One by s plus a. And what is its R O C? Real part of s is greater than minus a. In place of a, what I have to write? Phi e power minus phi t into u of t. What is its Laplace transform? One by s plus phi. Real part of s greater than minus pi, but what we have here t minus one shifting is there, so shifting property I have to use. So let us take this as x of t, and this as x of s. Then what is the time shifting property? X of t minus t naught. What is its Laplace transform? E power minus s. Whatever shifting constant is there, that multiplied with X of s, okay. So the now in here, what is there? U of t minus one is there. So here, instead of t, t minus one, I have to get. So constant, I will select it as one. Then what is its Laplace transform? E power minus s into one into x of s. Now apply this over here. Apply this. X of t minus one. This is our x of t. Wherever t is there, replace it with t minus one in this into u of t minus one. What is its Laplace transform then? E power minus s into x of s. E power minus s as it is, we will write. And what is x of s? This is our x of s. One by s plus pi. Okay. But what is our required function? Only e power minus pi t should be there. What are the extra terms we have? Let us simplify it. That's it. E power minus pi t into e power plus pi. Multiply this minus pi inside into u of t minus one. Laplace transform is e power minus s pi s plus pi. Same R O C will be there. Then here we want only e power minus pi t into U of t minus one. What is its Laplace transform? E power minus s. E power plus pi is there this side. If I take this side, means that will be changed to e power minus pi divided by s plus pi. Now what is the solution? E power minus pi t into U of t minus one. Laplace transform is e power minus of s plus pi by 
s plus phi where roc you have to mention here that is real part of s greater than real part of s greater than minus phi okay minus phi right here what is this then like that you have to solve the problems <coughs> Next, uh, few more problems. Take it as a few more problems. Try to solve this. X of t equal to e power t into sine two t. Next, x of t equal to e power two t into u of minus t plus e power three t into u of minus t. Try to solve these two problems. As well as this one, x of t equal to t into e power minus two into mod t. Okay, this problem also have to. Now let us see how to find the Laplace transform for this double-sided exponential function. Then easily you can solve this one, this last problem because mod t is the t into x of t shifting property. T into x of t that is a Differentiation in s domain property, time domain. That property you have to use. P into x of t related property is that that you have to use in this problem. These two you can proceed with a uh, that uh, shifting properties for or directly you can go with standard formula definition also to solve these two problems. Okay. Try to solve these three. Next last one more problem. Find. Find Laplace transform for x of t equal to e power minus a into mod t, mod signal, double sided exponential function. Try to solve that problem e power minus a into mod t. Same as Laplace uh, Fourier transform. Try to solve this problem. <clears throat> when t greater than zero, what is its value? When t less than zero, what is its value? So here also you can go with the standard definition, or we can depend on properties also here. Actually, e power minus a into mod t means this represents double-sided exponential function, isn't it? Double-sided exponential function. What about this? This is nothing but e power minus a t into u of t, positive time values. This is negative-sided. That means t is replaced with minus t, minus. So e power plus a t into u of minus t. Sum of these two is nothing but your double-sided exponential function. So e power minus a into mod t. This is nothing but sum of two functions: positive sided exponential plus negative sided exponential function. Okay. So now the Laplace transform of x of t. That is Laplace transform of this one. Two functions: e power minus a t into u of t plus e power a t into u of minus t. This we have to find. So let us solve this using properties. Already we have this property e power minus a t into u of t causal signal. What is its Laplace transform? One by s plus a, where real part of s is greater than minus a. Now let us take this as x of t signal. Then this corresponding to obviously x of s. So here we use time reversal property. Time reversal property. Then x of minus t. What is its Laplace transform? X of minus t. X of minus s. That means x of minus t means 
e power plus 80 into u of minus t laplace transform is minus s plus a and real part of s what you will get here a minus s is greater than zero is an here here denominator must be greater than zero means a minus s greater than zero a is greater than s that means real part of s is less than a you will get for this case okay because s is replaced with minus s right isn't it s is replaced with minus a means we cannot cancel minus both the sides we have to take left hand side term to right hand right hand side term okay. otherwise if you solve this integration using uh, standard definition of laplace transform means you will get that exponent term as a minus s must be greater than zero you will get restriction a is greater than s means real part of s less than a okay this is one condition and this is the other one okay so now this is the first one and let us take this is the second one 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 means laplace transform of these two signals right laplace transform of these two signals e power minus 80 into u of t plus e power 80 into u of minus t we said we have added two signals then linearity property corresponding laplace transform phase are also added 1 by s plus a plus 1 by a minus s and what is the restriction we have an roc real part of s greater than minus a and real part of s is less than a so the combination of these two signals is nothing but mod t laplace transform is denominator a plus b into a minus b a plus s into a minus s a square minus s square what about numerator 2a and roc we write it as real part of s less than a plus a Minus a is less than real part of s is less than a common roc because it is greater than minus a and less than plus a so in between these two poles clear e power minus a into mod t laplace transform is 2a by a square minus s square and the roc is in between two poles plus a and minus a if you have any doubt you can ask. Okay, these are the problems based on properties and finding transfer function. We have not yet started, so let us uh, go for next to two important theorems in Laplace transform: initial value theorem and final value theorem. Okay, so put the heading, everyone. Initial value theorem. Put it in your square box. Important. This is e power minus a into mod t. Laplace transform is. This is plus two a or minus two a. Plus two a only. Suppose if minus two a means here s square minus a square you will get. Okay, correct. So put it in a square box. Important this pair is also e power minus a mod t. Laplace transform is two a by a square minus s square. Okay. Next, put the heading. Initial value theorem. Initial value theorem. So here, actually, the name itself is suggesting initial value theorem means we can find the initial value of a signal. That means, actually, simply if x of s is given to us, we have to find small x of zero. Initial value means x of t. What is its initial value? X of zero. Final value means t equal to infinity. So we can find initial value using this theorem without having the time domain function x of t. 
suppose if x of s will be given to us directly we have to find x of t so the relation between these two functions is given by initial value theorem similarly the relation between x of s and x of infinity is given by final value theorem okay these are the two theorems important problems are also repeated as well as state and prove initial and final value theorems important question okay so let us see the statement first statement initial so mainly initial value theorem enables us to calculate the initial value of a function as i already said that is x of 0 so directly from its transform x of s okay x of s no need to find inverse laplace transform so here the statement is if x of t laplace transform is x of s then the initial value theorem states that states that limit t tends to 0 x of t laplace transform is laplace tra sorry t tends to laplace transform i have written limit t tends to 0 x of t nothing but x of 0 can be written as limit t tends to 0 x of t equal to limit <coughs> s tends to infinity s into x of s so this is a statement of initial value theorem important x of 0 equal to limit t tends to 0 x of t equal to limit s tends to infinity s into x of s proof so to prove this we are going to consider laplace transform of like this consider laplace transform of dx of t by dt okay from the definition this we have this laplace transform as zero to one sided laplace transform we are considering unilateral laplace transform or signal is assumed as a causal signal causal signal means exist from only 0 to infinity onwards initial value itself is 0 okay signal multiplied with kernel already we have calculated this differentiation and we have the relation here that is seen to x of s minus x of 0 please check the properties time differentiation property there we have laplace transform of dx of t by dt as s into x of s minus x of 0 that's it only this statement we are going to consider laplace transform of any signal is signal multiplied with kernel this is a corresponding laplace transform apply limit s tends to infinity on both the sides apply limit s tends to infinity on both the sides apply limit s tends to infinity on both the sides okay if you apply limit s tends to infinity limit s tends to infinity now you can neglect this i am going to take only these two equalities limit s tends to infinity Zero to infinity, dx of t by dt, e power minus s t dt, limit s tends to infinity, s into x of s minus x of zero. So if you apply s tends to infinity on this entire time, where is the s value? Only here it is there. S tends to infinity. That means substitute s equal to infinity, e power minus infinity. Then what is the value? e power e minus infinity value is zero so this total term left hand side is zero and then this side s tends to infinity of this total expression actually isn't it so s into x of s and we can't apply s tends to infinity over here because this is small x of zero which is a constant constant we cannot apply right 
So here s tends to infinity if you apply e power minus s is there. If you substitute s equal to infinity here, e power minus infinity is zero. Entire term will get cancelled. Isn't it zero? That means entire term will be neglected. Zero. S tends to infinity, whatever term is there, zero is there. Nothing but x of zero. Limit s tends to infinity s into x of s. So this x of zero can also be written as this t tends to zero x of t, which is this is nothing but initial value theorem. Application will be there in control system subject also. Even we have problems in our subject. Find the initial value for the following given signal like that. Okay, transient analysis, steady state analysis of your signals. In later on subjects, we will use this initial value theorem statement as well as final value theorem statement. Clear initial value theorem. X of s function will be given to us. We have to find x of zero. How to get it? Simply by substituting the limit, applying the limit s tends to infinity in the x of s function. And if any cancellation are there, arrangement of terms over this side, you can easily find the x of zero value, initial value of the function. Okay, that is the procedure here. So mainly initial value theorem enables us to find the initial value of your function. That is x of zero. So now let us go for final value theorem statement. <clears throat> final value theorems theorem. Final value theorem. State uh, same as same story here, like initial value. Here we can find the final value of the signal. So mainly this final value theorem enables us to determine the final value of a function x of t. Final value means x of infinity, and that also directly from its Laplace transform. Using x of s, we can find the final value of the function. That means without the need for finding the inverse Laplace transform for the given s domain function. So it states that mainly the final value theorem states that. If x of t Laplace transform is x of s, then the final value theorem states that limit t tends to infinity x of t equal to it's nothing but x of infinity only x of infinity equal to limit s tends to zero now s into X of s. This is a statement. In the same manner, you can prove this final value theorem also. But the only change is that instead of s tends to infinity previously in previous theorem, here what is the limit we have? S tends to zero. We have to apply. That is the only change. Try to prove this same as previous problem theorem initial value theorem. Proof if you take what we consider we have considered Laplace transform of dx of t by dt. What is the Laplace transform of this function? Already we have calculated this using in time differentiation property. But uh, we have the formula for Laplace transform finding standard formula signal dx of t by dt into e power minus st dt s into x of s minus x of zero. Now what are the limits that we have here? S tends to zero is there. S tends to zero is there. So both the sides, both the sides apply limits. S tends to zero. So if you apply limit S tends to zero, what about this value? One right, zero to infinity dx of t by dt dt limit S tends to zero s into x of s minus x of zero only, isn't it? S tends to zero if you apply, this is one. Now see here, integration is with respect to t variable and differentiation is also with respect to t variable. So both will get can canceled. Integration and differentiation will get canceled. And what is the function we have? Simply we will get it as x of t here. Isn't it? Simply we will get it as x of z, x of t. So s into x of s minus x of zero. What we will get here? Upper limit is infinity, lower limit is zero, limit s tends to zero, s into x of s 
minus x of 0. Both will get cancelled. Finally, we got final value as limit s tends to 0 is seen to x of s. So here integration and differentiation both are with respect to t variable. Differentiation and integration will get cancelled. Whatever function is there here that we will get. Upper limit minus lower limit now. Okay, x of 0 is constant. We can't apply s tends to 0 over here. It is a constant, small x of 0. So this is a proof. Limit t tends to infinity, x of t is s tends to 0, s into x of s. Important theorems. Please practice the proofs as well as statement. Problem